Hi, Apartment Therapy. My name is Meher. Welcome to my 750 square foot apartment in New York City. I've lived in this apartment for a little over two years and I plan to be here longer. The entire apartment is very, very spacious, which is rare for New York City. This living room is an L-shaped um, type of space. I think people traditionally usually expect the dining space to be where my desk work setup is, but I wanted it configured in this way so the social space flows better. I actually had the inspiration for this apartment for a really long time. I had a vision board, I knew exactly what I wanted. This was not the apartment I thought I would be living in, but I'm really, really glad I'm here and I've turned it into a lot of elements that I love. This wall was definitely one of my first things that I did and I love this space because everything on this wall is of an artist that I've either personally know or they've made it for me or someone that I've loved for over 10 years and I think that's really really special to me this is an artist that I've loved since I was 17 she was uh, inspiration for my high school pieces this is an actual piece of cork from a tree in Portugal because cork is made in Portugal I wanted my wall to feel like a gallery wall in a museum, except I know in a museum things would be spaced out more. Uh, and then I DIY'd this bench right over here. A lot of the things on that bench are gifts or Etsy or things that I found. And then moving into this space, I have my IKEA DIY greenhouse there, which I love. I have over 52 plants. So I hacked this cabinet to be a fully functional greenhouse. It has one of my prized possessions, my polka dot begonia and my fellow pink princess. I water these plants pretty frequently, but they're, it's a pretty self-sustaining space. This is where I spend most of my evenings, in front of the TV, eating dinner. <laughs> and I got, got this couch from West Elm. It's the Andes. Uh, I actually got it from the West Elm outlet in Brooklyn. I like to keep things that are dear to me around me at all times. So this tray also has different things from books to prayer books, to coasters that I've made. Here is one of my first DIYs that I've kept and love. It's this mirror, it's extremely old, and I found it on the street, and I knew that I wanted a Parisian mirror for a really long time. So I actually DIY'd um, this entire mirror using these appliques and did this, and I think this is the one that gave me the courage for this chair over here, which is also DIY'd. I love this anthropology chair, it was extremely expensive. So I found a chair with similar bones and completely flipped it to add this cane on the side and the caning on the back, reupholstered it to make it similar to the chair that I wanted. So something else that's really important for me in my space is that everything is modular and configurable. I host a lot, I love having people over for game nights and dinners and movie nights and meditations. And I really looked at pieces that I could move around pretty easily or that seated more people. So this is actually a really deep couch and if you take off the back cushions, uh, someone can sleep on it. That usually ends up getting pushed against the window and it becomes a seat for two people if they wanna be cozy. If there are more people, I actually just um, remove the dividing aspect of the living room and dining room so it's one full flow space. One way to do this uh, was just to have furniture that was lighter to move around. So I actually wasn't married to any dining table look at the time that I did this setup. So I bought the cheapest IKEA dining table, which was all wood, and then plastered and painted it into a look that I wanted. But the bench, I just move it out into the living room, push the table against this wall, serve food and snacks over here, and then this entire space opens up and just becomes like a free flowing element for anyone who wants to be here. I love earthy tones. Um, I've grown up around the world, everywhere from India to Dubai to Guatemala. So a lot of the things around me are inspired by travel, life experiences. I really love arches and I've loved arches before they were extremely trendy. I looked at my vision board and tried to incorporate elements that I didn't get in this apartment into the design choices I made. So I wanted something that feels earthy and green. I have a lot of plants. This also reflects that. I think I wanted to have the green also just to bring the outdoor in and just have the space that feels nurturing and then use earthy tones to tie that in. So the lamp and the chairs have this like jute um, element to it. I plan to make the space so slowly transition and feel a little, a little bit more of a India meets Paris kind of vibe. And that's also why I DIY'd crown molding into my ceiling.
The reason that I have crown molding on my ceiling is because I actually wanted an apartment that had more character to it and had these older features in it, but I have an insect phobia. It's very real. <laughs> So a lot of apartment hunting in New York for me is making sure that I can live somewhere that is a little bit more bug free than anywhere else. So one way that I did that was I went to Lowe's and I measured out uh, my ceilings and put in this like subtle but still ornate moldings into the ceiling. I still am sourcing a medallion applique for on top of the light. And I'm gonna switch out this pendant for something that's more copper. So. Still working on this space, and I think if you DIY, you know that every space is a work in progress. So this is my work from home area. Uh, I'm a senior product designer at Etsy. It's really important for me to have a space where I can just come back to and focus that's also separate from the rest of my apartment. I also paint and just do a lot of art and DIY, so this acts as my little creative corner. And overall, what I really wanted from this space was I didn't want it to be an eyesore towards that side of the room. Everyone asks me why I didn't just position the, the desk against the wall. I hate sitting at my desk and looking at a blank wall or even a painting, like I need there to be space in front of me. So when I sit here, I overlook my living room, my dining room, I can see everything, I can see the time of the day. So in order to create more separation, I actually worked with just putting some of my biggest plants in front of it. I did consider DIYing more of a barrier, like a tambour wood barrier, but I think anything else would make the space look really closed up, especially because there's actually no overhead lighting in this apartment. Everything is sconces, and I think a really, really good way to play with the height and the space that your apartment has is to play around with floor lamps, table lamps, ceiling lamps, sconces, and try to create a variation. I also wanted to have a nice backdrop when I'm on all my calls. So I DIY this moss panel using an Ikea frame that's really, really thick, and I just flipped it and use it as a box. And a lot of these shells are shells I've picked up from travels across Mexico and Dubai. And then in here, I store all the art supplies that I need straight away. So that those are like books, my tools, cords, things to package stuff. I used to run an Etsy store, so a lot of those supplies are in here. And then that takes me to this part of my apartment, which is the entryway. It's actually one of my favorite parts. I painted this last summer around the same time, and I've been inspired by Frida Kahlo for years and years and years, so I wanted the blue color from her house, but I also wanted elements of my culture. So I wanted these Rajasthani Indian archways and I really didn't like how the door broke up this wall. It made the space look really dark. So I wanted it to feel like the door didn't actually exist. And then these are Ikea shoe racks. I've put this vinyl wallpaper on it and I got these lion door handles from Etsy and I absolutely love them. They're still my favorite door handles in this apartment. I don't actually functionally use them because this just works like this, but I think it adds a really nice look and leans into the Indian aesthetic a little bit more. And then I actually have an entryway closet over here which is my closet that ends up being coats, bags, DIYs. Right now it is a mess because it has a lot of DIYs in it, just wood, storage, etc. It's a work in progress. This mirror um, takes us to the rest of the apartment and towards the kitchen, but I actually found this mirror on the street and it's from 1947. It's super heavy and super old and um, it actually didn't have any of these black beans on it. But I really liked the West Elm mirror that looks like this and I wanted to make a dupe, which then takes me to this stool. This is your classic Ikea stool. I wanted a space where you can sit and you know put on your shoes. And I actually really like Moroccan tile work. So I got these Moroccan tile stencils and stenciled uh, the, the bench slash stool just to make it look a little nicer and then caned, caned the sides. So this is one of my favorite parts of this apartment. It's my coffee bar. I don't drink, but I love to host. When people come over, I like to make them coffee and tea, and they help themselves to it. I'm also a big board game fanatic, so that's where I store all my boards. This shelf over here is all the candles in my apartment that are already done, uh, but I end up using the wax that's left in them that can still be used and make new candles. And then on this side is just an assortment of different cups, toppings, some books down there, cleaning supplies, and just things where I don't know where to put them yet. This is also an IKEA cabinet I found on Marketplace and then refurbished by adding 
um, this texture in the back, and then switching out the handles. Everything on here has been sourced from travels or friends. This entire section over here is also DIY'd. I DIY'd this mirror, which I found on the street, and it was, it's exactly the same size as this, so it was like it was meant for this space. I anti-ticked, um, I just wanted some, something a bit more eight, so it feels more like a bar and complements the copper. This ladder for my blankets has a really fun story because um, I never was the type of person who wanted a ladder for my blankets. I would usually just fold them up and keep them in this basket. But someone living a block away was selling this ladder, but she had cane. She used it as a headboard for $10. If you've ever bought cane, you know that a yard of cane roughly costs about $25. So I used the cane for other DIYs and then filled in the holes in here, painted it black, and now I use it as a space to store blankets for when people come over and they want to get cozy. This bar stool over here, um, we found it in Midtown uh, outside a bar. My dad picked it up. It was his first stoop. He doesn't live in New York. And we made it into this planter. I recently realized we actually picked it up from a bar where I celebrated my 21st birthday, so it almost feels full circle. So this is my bedroom. I wanted it to feel more like a cabin. I leaned into a lot of the darker wood tones, brighter colors. It's still modern eclectic, I would say. So this mirror over here is a DIY that I did with my dad. And this is live edged wood. I got three planks and they're from a tree in Seattle, I believe. This was actually one of the first things I painted in this apartment. That was back when I still wanted it to feel more on the modern side um, and like have some depth. Um, I still think it works, but I think if I had to repaint it, I'd probably pick something different. This is a really, really comfortable chair that actually turns into a single bed. It's from Wayfair, I believe. I usually spend time reading here. When I'm not reading here, there are too many clothes on this chair piled up because this is that chair in my bedroom. And then those are my bedside table lamps that are actually also DIY'd. They are tequila bottles. So I made these cane lampshades for them that I think are beautiful and should never be tossed out. My bed is also from Wayfair. One thing that I love about this bed is that there's space under it. Uh, in New York, storage is really big, but I do store my prayer mat, a box of memories of cards, photos, etc., and then another box of small vases that I switch in and out. But besides that, there's not much under this bed. Oh, and my foam roller. That also lives under my bed. But besides that, I just keep it open space uh, and it makes it easier to clean. This is a painting I did a while back and it's a line from a prayer that I grew up with that I really, really love. And the prayer is in Arabic, in Hindi, as well as in English. And I love that it's above my bed. I, I think it, it reminds me of a lot of the things that I've overcome and been blessed with. And then those shelves actually that are reflected in the mirror are also DIY'd. I made these with my dad. They're also live edged wood. And I just have all these items and I think I look at them and I feel like it just, it's a good reminder of the love that I'm surrounded by and just like things that are spiritually grounding for me. This is one of my two closets in this space. I am blessed with four very large closets, two in my bedroom, so I actually end up keeping a lot of my winter clothes, suitcases in here, and then a lot of my clothes right now here, along with things that I don't know what to do with. This dresser is one of my favorite DIYs that I've done. Um, I, again, loved a bone inlay anthropology dresser, but it was extremely expensive. So I found a dresser that I liked that was similar and then painted it, found these stencils on Etsy, which is the exact stencil that the bone inlay on the anthropology dresser is, and then stenciled away. And then this rug is from rugs.com. Uh, I really loved the blue. It goes with all of my bedding. It goes with the blue tones across the room and really ties the space in. I'm leaning towards making the space feel more like a cabin. I'm planning to DIY some faux wooden beams into the ceiling, and I think that'll really bring the space into this more cozy vibe. So this is my bathroom. I love that I have a tub. I get migraines pretty often, so it lets me soak in with Epsom salt. 
I also love that I have a window in there. Uh, it brings in some natural light and allows me to keep a plant. I usually like my bathroom to feel pretty feminine. So I've leaned into the pinks and the peaches and also some like neutral tones. I spend a lot of my time here. I cook a lot and I really enjoy cooking. Uh, both my grandmothers on my dad's side and my mom's side were phenomenal cooks. While this space doesn't have a lot of DIYs, I have switched out the doorknobs. They're little Moroccan ceramic doorknobs and I think they look really cute. But overall, I think some of my favorite things about the space is the window in there and a lot of the stuff in my spice drawers um, and just like utensils that I've used and just different knickknacks from like cups to like copper. Those are the things about my kitchen that I really enjoy. I think something that really, really influenced me and still influences the way that I work is um, where I come from and I think it's been really interesting to be in this interior design home decor space because I've noticed that in America at least, there aren't a lot of Indian women in this space. And that makes it a, a little bit hard because I grew up not really loving Indian decor or like whatever that means. It just felt like too much patterns, too many colors. And then you come to this part of the world and a lot of design is influenced by the West and it's a lot of minimalism and neutral tones and vintage gold, Parisian, marble. And I love all those styles, but a lot of those styles don't feel like a reflection and an extension of my mind. Having it in my space now almost feels a little rebellious uh, towards the younger Meher who didn't actually appreciate a lot of this. I have grown up in a lot of different places around the world. I was born in India, but I spent most of my childhood in the Middle East, predominantly in Dubai. I was very good at finding home in people and smaller places, so friends, family, etc. But I realized at some point in my mid-20s that there needs to be something that's more stable. So I started thinking about what home means to me for myself and started to think of it as like a turtle who like carries its home on its back. And that I think also got me really excited to be in the interior design space and think about like what my home whenever I had it would look like and I always knew I wanted it to be an extension of my creativity, an extension of where I am in life and a space where I can fill it with people who gravitate towards each other and just build community.